Well, you probably feel quite relaxed after that short meditation. You may even feel better than usual. If so, it is an indication of the mind's effect on the body and a small glimpse of one of the benefits of these sessions. The intimate relationship between body and mind has been well documented in recent decades. It has been found that thoughts and attitudes have a tremendous impact on the body's chemistry. The most obvious example is the fear-adrenaline connection. The emotion of fear causes the release of adrenaline into the bloodstream to prepare the body to either meet the challenge or to flee. In the case of less urgent emotions and thoughts, the influence is subtler, but just as real. Negative thoughts produce detrimental conditions in the body and even in the mind, while positive thoughts generate health and vitality. Fortunately, you are able to choose the thoughts you entertain and the emotions you embrace, which is one of the things meditation teaches you. In your daily life, you probably spend much of the time reacting to conditions and events in preconditioned ways from years of habit. Meditation, however, allows you to consciously alter your automatic responses with constructive thoughts and attitudes, resulting in more temperate responses during times of stress. Consider what you've learned so far. You're coming to realize that meditation is rewarding your body, mind, and soul. These three components of your being, your mental, physical, and spiritual faculties, become much better attuned and synchronized through meditation. This means they coordinate and function as one instead of possibly warring among themselves. You experience this unity as inner harmony, reduced conflicts, and a sense of peace in your everyday activities. Some may call this effect a form of self-suggestion. Call it what you like. The results are what count and the results are real. Consider for a moment the observations of Edgar Cayce that thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. If this statement sounds peculiar, just look at the chair you're sitting in. It was a thought, an idea, before it became a thing called a chair. A more comprehensive meaning of thoughts are things, however, is that the mind is the architect whose thoughts design and shape energy into physical form or expression. This is what the Casey readings mean when they say, mind is the builder. Never is this more evident than in the mind's direct influence on our bodies. We have known for some time that the mind can make us sick or it can heal us depending on the thoughts we harbor and the emotions we carry around. Since the soul is not a visible physical entity, we can gain an idea of its nature by comparing the soul to an electrical force, an individual bundle of spiritual energy. Just as electrical vibrations transmitted to a telephone become sound waves, the soul's energy vibrates through the mind to produce effects in your body. The mechanism of a telephone converts unseen electrical impulses into sound, your body converts unseen spiritual impulses into physical vibrations which you can sometimes feel during meditation. In meditation, these subtle energies have a clearer passage through the body. The body itself, of course, is an energy field on its most elemental level. In addition, your nervous system and endocrine glands not only regulate numerous physical functions, they also act as channels of spiritual energies. The preparations for meditation, relaxation, the head and neck exercise, keeping the spine straight and deep breathing all help to clear the channels for receiving the soul's energies unimpeded. You might also think of the body as a battery and soul energy as the source of recharging the electrical forces of your physical and mental faculties. Recharging occurs when you meditate. Efficient recharging, it should be mentioned, 
requires you to maintain your health by eating properly, taking adequate exercise, and getting quality sleep. See pages 10 to 12 in the workbook for guidelines for staying healthy. You also want to avoid letting your battery get too drained because then recharging takes longer and longer to restore to normal. A defective phone is not a suitable instrument for sending or receiving and an unhealthy body does not receive or hold a charge well. If you are essentially healthy, meditation will help keep you that way. Next, you will be introduced to the mind's role in meditation and gain practice with special affirmations. For now, you may want to take a break and resume later.